welcome back and welcome to Rose Cottage 2 yes I'm living up in the hills now and it's beautiful we've all used electrical appliances before and we've all been told electricity is dangerous but how much is dangerous and how much is enough electricity to kill you I'll answer those two questions for you in just a few moments When it comes to the dangers of electricity, it's not so much the voltage that's dangerous, it's the amps, because it's the amps that'll kill you. So what's the difference between volts and amps? Well, here's a really simple explanation. And I'm gonna use the, the garden hose and the tap as an analogy. Uh, your tap, it's turned off, but in behind it, you've got the water pressure, the mains water pressure. But no water's flowing out of your uh, tap, so you've got the potential for it to flow. So the voltage is the potential for current to flow. Well, as soon as you turn the tap on, the water flows. And that water flowing is like the current, because current is the flow of electricity. So when it comes to electrical appliances and electrical dangers, it's not the voltage, it's the amps. So how much is enough to cause you injury? How much is enough to kill you? Well, it's generally agreed by most uh, electrical regulators, safety authorities, medical uh, authorities, that we can feel around about one milliamp. Now, one milliamp is one one thousandth of an amp, or 0 0.001 of an amp. To put that into perspective, the standard power point in your house is rated at 10 amps. And if you use an appliance like a um, maybe a hair straightener or, or something like that, or maybe a power tool, that might draw only a couple of amps. Something like a toaster, sandwich press, floodlights, or something more heavy duty, that could be drawing up to 10 amps. So one milliamp, it's not very much, is it? Now it gets even scarier. So how much is enough to kill a healthy adult or permanently injure them? Well, it's generally agreed around about 25 milliamps. 25 milliamps is 0.025 of an amp. It's not much at all. Now, what determines the difference between electric shock and electrocution? Well, the well, let me explain first of all, what is the difference between the two? Electric shock, you'll survive. Electrocution, you don't. Now, there are three factors that will determine the difference and the severity of the electric shock you get and what the outcome is. The first one is the duration of the exposure to the current. The longer it is, the more harmful it is. The second one is how many amps there are. So the more amps, the greater risk there is. And the third factor is the pathway. Now if it's just in your hand, you might, might get a bit of a, a bite out of it, or it could really injure your, your finger. But it's not probably not gonna kill you. However, if it comes through a part of your body and it goes across your chest, you've got your heart in there. And as soon as it crosses through the heart, that's when the danger really occurs. That's when it gets pretty serious. And if you ever get any sort of an electric shock, even if it is just a mild one, it's strongly recommended that you go and seek medical treatment. What they'll do is they'll just wire you up to one of those machines. They'll have a look at the reading, see what's going on with your heart, and they'll tell you pretty quickly what needs to be done. And hopefully uh, you'll be able to leave there pretty quickly. If it's more serious, they'll give you the treatment. Now, the effects of an electric shock, they may not be apparent straight away. They could take many hours or even 24 hours or a day or two for it to, to come up. So if you get an electric shock, always seek medical treatment. So there you have it. One milliamp is about what we can sense when we, we can just feel it. And 25 milliamps is enough to kill a healthy adult. This is why it's so important that you get your electrical appliances checked on a regular basis. I'm John Blackburn. This is Acne Test and Tagging. Keep safe.